giving your heart to God. Take the stage, Lord. Have your way. We are just vessels and nothing more. When you're done, please take the glory. What satisfied just to see you glorified? Christians in Nigeria, and he's trying to be the president of Nigerians, no matter what your religious religious believers, uh, whatever. So, do we have any Muslims in the in the house? If not, we're gonna move on. All right, I'm gonna use the opportunity again to thank you so much uh, for coming and thank everybody for coming. And uh, basically, we know who he is. And we know what he is trying to do. We are trying to take Nigeria to the next level. Um, we know what's been going on for a couple of years right now. And right now, we have a candidate who has what it takes to take Nigeria to what you and I, as you know, have been dreaming about. So, um, I want to use this opportunity again to thank um, Mr. Showare. I want to um, implore all of us to give him a round of applause for being here. Uh, so, um, right now, we, uh, I'm sure most of, m most of us over here are dual citizens. We are American citizens, and at the same time, we are Nigerian citizens. Uh, that's, uh, you know, uh, you know, so basically, we are going to say our national anthem. So we're going to stand up and say our national anthem to honor our motherland. All right, one, two, three, let's go. Arise, oh. 
introduction of the program by the coordinator of this movement and um, allow me to introduce live on stage Miss Rhoda Hackman. Take it back. Take it back. Action. presence. 
in the evening of November 18, 2018, to help me render your support to our Nigeria presidential candidate, Omoyele Sore. He is here to tell us about his intention to take Nigeria back to a state of our dream and also to engage in discussion with our lovely Nigerian community, Columbus, Ohio, on that better ways to forward Nigeria in Columbus, Ohio. I agree with me that this is the best time for a better Nigeria of our dream, the dream of good road, dream of 24 hours electricity, dream of better education for our children, dream of good health, and dream of so many. Therefore, for that dream to be achieved, we need a son of nobody, but with pedigree. A man who has no money bag, but has the ideas. A young man who has no godfathers, no godmother, but look out to Nigeria of our dream, needs us to be part of history. Columbus, Ohio, I know we want to be part of that Nigeria of our dreams. We need men and women. We need young and old. Need children and adults. Need pastor. Need deacon. We need bishop. We need reverend, minister, and name them all. Just like American did collectively to achieve that dream that is possible for you and I. The dream to not just attend any school of choice, but possible to attend Ivy League schools. Not to only enter the bus and sit comfortably anywhere, but to also drive in any car of our choice. We all agree that it, looks, it took a collective effort to make this a reality. It took a pastor to put on his pastoral garments, to preach, support, and sacrifice for the movement that made this dream possible. For that immigrant from Nigeria, Ghana, Togo, to achieve his or her dream. The dream also requires the Caucasian men and women of intelligence who stood for justice rather than sitting on the fence. It took both young and old to participate in the rally that brought about possible dreams today. Therefore, I urge the Nigeria both at home and abroad to see Omoyele Sore as the candidate of her choice and not a struggle between the Aosu, Yoruba, and an Igbo, because it has always seized a better Nigeria most of the time. For example, as a student in Unilife, who fought against the military in 1994, 1998, on the issues of the of the issues of the World Bank and IMF policy? Omoyele Shore perceived that those policies was not going to promote the Nigeria economy based on our state, culture, and development. On this note, I implore for your backing for Omoyele Shore as he refuses the support from Godfathers and Godmother. He needs our financial, moral, and other support. The support is not limited, but it comes across money, your money. That money you've been saving ever since you've been in the United States. We need it. It is time to take Nigeria back. Actually, it's not that we are sourcing for money just like that, but as we said, he has no Godfather. If he has Godfather, means that Godfather put him there and the Godfather comes after him to pay back that money. But this time around, he wants you, he wants me. He wants all of us in this room to support him with our money so that we will have a voice. Put your money where your mouth is. Therefore, as we pledge and plead for support, support, I just want to thank you for your patience and time as we go through the agenda one after the other. 
God bless you as you do so. God bless Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you so much, Miss Rona. And we're going to move on to the next agenda on the, uh, the uh, next item on the agenda. And I'm going to use this opportunity to introduce, like, on stage, nobody else than the Mayor Makinde. Mayor Makinde, in case you don't know, he's been in the political scene in Ohio, in the United States of America, for some time now. And um, he has so many messages to pass across to us. Much thanks to everybody in the room. Uh, you know, and like as you said, I've got involved in politics because because I felt like there was a need here uh, for Nigerian American boys, for uh, African American boys, first and second generation. Uh, and uh, it's always exciting to see somebody who has a, a, a good message. Uh, message is not only true, message that will actually fix things, and um, the, and someone that has the the intellectual capability, the charisma. Know, uh, to, to get things done, I met this young man, and I'll call him young man, this young man in Nigerian presidential history uh, level. He's a young man. I met this young man today uh, in the studio, and uh, listening to him in, in, in there myself, um, there's a far contrast in, in what I've heard Nigerian presidents talk like on TV and what I'm hearing him talk like. I mean, it's just, it's like night and day. So obviously, you know, we, we, we hope that he can get in there and make a difference. So. But, uh, but uh, as someone who is here in Columbus, Ohio, I'm supposed to do the welcome. So, uh, you know, you're in our home, uh, I'm not the only one here. There's, a, there's doing work in leadership, or they're showing the Nigerians uh, a, a great anywhere they go on, on the globe. Anywhere we are on the globe, Nigerians are great. You find the most educated ones, the most, the most charismatic people, the most, the most well-spoken, well-dressed. So, again, there's many of us out here doing this. So, on behalf of all the leaders in the room, uh, and I'm, I'll go from Sister Adoja to her. So Adoja, she's the uh, president of NIDO, uh, uh, NIDO uh, Ohio here. I don't know if she, she's pleased with, you know, wave your hand. Sister Adoja is the president of NIDO. Uh, to, to, uh, to, to brother Mr. K, you know, we, uh, you know he, he, he probably doesn't want to recognize him as the, one of the leaders of ADO. ADO was a pack that we put together to, to help raise money so Nigerian Americans can have, oh, sorry, I'm sorry. Africans in general, because ADO means African diaspora, so that's so they can have a voice in the United States. So he's one of the leaders in that uh, group as well. Uh, and we have uh, someone who, uh, and we're talking about raising money for you, supporting you, somebody who has done a lot in that kind of sense. Uh, you know, I, when I ran in 2016, I went to Europe by 21, I, I went to different organizations. They, I raised $10,000 and I had a competitive race. I was very close to winning that race. But out of that $10,000, I raised 7000 of the group was from Europe by 21. So I mean, so you know, it, it says a lot. So I mean, with that, with that being said, I want to make sure that we uh, recognize uh, <laughs> Professor Adedeko. Uh, you know, people, people are doing stuff in here, so and, and I want to make sure they recognize. But on behalf of all these leaders that we're talking about, I would I'll be remiss to not to mention uh, uh, my sister and, and Fendi, uh, uh, you know, the, the Professor and Fendi, uh, and uh, uh, you know, uh, she's. Uh, the state of Ohio has a commission for Africans, not for all Africans, you know, for new Africans, and she's the chairperson of that commission. So when she talks to the governor of Ohio about policies of, that uh, should be passed on behalf of Africans and every day, and we, we are sitting in the room with her, you know. She can talk to the governor, to the legislature in Ohio about policies that should, should help us grow, help our children grow. So as we're talking about Nigeria, we're talking about people in the room that can make a difference, a lot of difference. So uh, again, on behalf of all of them, on behalf of myself and my family, I welcome you to, to Columbus, Ohio. I welcome you to this event. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Thank you for Let's put that ass again again for Mr. Mendo Makibe. All right, before I introduce the Echo himself, before I give him the mic, you know, the equal color, color of the political scene right now in Nigeria, I'm going to use this opportunity to um, um, actually bring some dignitaries to the I table. Join me as I introduce Dr. Haji to the high table. <laughs> Dr. Haji? Is he here? Yes. All right, let's give him a good chance to get up for this. And of course, 
Oh, Mr. Ayedeso. Ayedeso, right? Okay. All right? Join us on the high zone. Put your hands together for you. Come on. All right, the last person is Dr. J.O. That's what I have on you. Dr. J.O. Who's that? Grace. Oh, Grace. You guys should know. Okay. Um, Grace. Grace. Oh, Gracie Boise, actually. The general manager of Apex One Radio. Come on. Yes, come on. We might have room to go across. All right. Thank you so much for coming again. And um, it's run right about time for us to introduce, like I said, the poor Ponopolo uh, of the Nigerian political scene right now. Um, you know, it's about time for us to give him the opportunity to express himself. But to do this, we are going to give nobody else than Mr. Pius Omaruga the privilege to do this. Are you ready? Yes. Yes. I'm going to say, ASC, take it back, take it back, action. For the Oracle itself is here. Yes. So we're not joking. Let's do it. ASC, take, take it, it back. back. <laughs> I don't want that one. <laughs> <laughs> that right. We have to scream so that the mayor himself can hear that. That's so that Baba Niger can hear that. I don't play here in Ohio. So we we'll try to send it back to Dara. So we're not joking. Let's do it. ASC, take it back. the hurricane himself to Ohio, first time in Ohio. So we got to shake the building. So every welcome, I'm going to let show you, yeah? to thank the organizers of uh, the events this evening for making it possible for us to spread our message of hope, of development, of resistance and uh, revolution from Nigeria to here in Columbus, Ohio. This wouldn't have been possible without the help of uh, Rhoda, where is she here? Our sister, she left. And also Dr. Fadi Rosel, right? Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, I cannot do without also acknowledging some of our friends that came from out of uh, town. Yinka here, Yinka Obasa, who is uh, who's from the next city over, uh, from here I think two hours away. Uh, and uh, also Sheon Okusawo, okay, what do you want from And um, today in Nigeria is the beginning of uh, the campaigns for the presidential election that will be happening next year. And uh, I'm supposed to be in Nigeria today to commence the campaigns that uh, is going to lead us to the presidential villa next year in Abuja. But for some reason I decided that I will come here instead. The reason is simple. Uh, we are dealing with two old men. Yes, 
And if we are going to start the race, it's better to let them start first. <laughs> While I play around, and when I return to Nigeria, I can always catch up with them. Yes. <laughs> yes. So as I'm here, I actually found out that the idea themselves are not ready. And they are not doing anything. They did an event today in which President Buhari's party and himself and the Vice President are launching what they call Next Level. Uh, that is their campaign slogan. But you know Nigerians being very creative people, uh, they did a lot of cartoons, which shows uh, President Buhari blindfolded and Nigerians following him to fall over a cliff. And they said that is the next level if you follow by bound. <laughs> you are going to be led by a blind man over the cliff. Uh, the same thing they said to the candidate of uh, the PDP, uh, Bubaka Atiku. People said, well, if you follow him, you know what he will do. Some people drew a cartoon of everybody following him holding on to their wallet. <laughs> yes. And these guys who follow them, they are going to rob you. That's the reality. So I'm trying to break it down to you to understand the dilemma that Nigeria is facing today. And um, Nigeria, in my view, is like a country of you know that was South Africa before 1994, where there was apartheid. Uh, except that South Africa's apartheid had a white minority rule oppressing a black majority. Nigeria's apartheid is black, you know, black minority rulers oppressing, <laughs> a, you know, a black majority as well. But the difference between Nigeria and South Africa was that when South Africa ended apartheid, they did not look for a white person who was involved in apartheid to lead them. They went to look for an activist who fought against apartheid to lead them. And they looked for the person who had the best pedigree, the best reputation and integrity, and that was Nelson Mandela and made him the president of South Africa. But in the case of Nigeria, we had some of our people are looking for the people who were the operators of our own local apartheid to lead us. It's like South Africans voting for Big Bota in 1994 to lead them. That is the kind of thing we are facing. Those who are priming themselves and positioning themselves to lead Nigeria at this time were the same people who caused Nigeria the pain and suffering and sorrow that Nigeria is in today. The ones that are not directly involved are partially involved, but these two other major characters that we have in front of us who are leading the behemoth parties, the PDP and the APC, are the people who probably, when you were growing up, you heard about them. You know, if you didn't hear about them, you probably studied them. I was saying it yesterday in Chicago that in 1979, a social studies teacher of mine taught me about a man named Audu Obe. He was the Minister of Agriculture to Shakari. In 2018, Audu Obe is still the Minister of Agriculture to Buhari. That tells you how much Nigeria did not progress between 1979 and 2018. If someone was born in 1979, how old will he be by 2019? Yeah? 40 years. That is how to just mathematically or arithmetically describe the circumlocution into which Nigeria has been put in the last 40 years. 40 good years. The reason I'm saying 40 is that Aldobo is likely to remain the Minister of Agriculture till next year, 2019. Because Buhari doesn't fire, or he only hires, he doesn't fire. They will remain in government. But if you're thinking about Aldobo, look at Buhari who was in power since, I mean, he was in power in 1983. In 1983, I was in class two, secondary school, when they announced the coup and 
Harry took over. And he was there till about 1985. And he left. In 1992, Atiku Abubakar was the presidential aspirant of the Social Democratic Party. Right? In 1992, I was at the University of Lagos, year one. I mean, my second year at the University of Lagos, so yeah, going to third year. So, when Atiku, when Buhari was president of Nigeria through a military coup in 1983, he was 42 years old. When Atiku contested as SDP presidential aspirant in 1992, he was 42 years old. According to the official records, <laughs> don't forget that Buhari's sister is 82 years old, and Buhari is 76 or 75 going to 76. Atiku is 72, according to his football age. It's not unlikely that these guys are both in their 80s. You can't rule it out. But let's assume that we're dealing with numbers that they gave to us. But what haven't they done? Atiku went on to become the vice president of Nigeria between 1990 and uh, 1999 and 2007, if I get that correctly. Yes, eight good years. They left Nigeria in the dust. Of course, Buhari was only president or head of state for two years before he was kicked out. And as I was on the radio show today, a question was thrown out at me as to what I would do about corruption or punishing people who have destroyed Nigeria. It's a very tricky question because all the time people ask me not to say what I want to do when I become the president of Nigeria. I understand it, but anybody who is in my position who doesn't know what he wants to do and can verbalize it is not ready to be president of Nigeria. That's the truth. And I said to them, and really to them, the problem with Nigeria is that Nigeria has a problem with justice. Nigeria cannot bring justice to the offenders of Nigerian states and cannot bring them to justice. Otherwise, Buhari would be in prison now, awaiting maybe execution for planning a coup, which is treason. According to Nigeria's constitution, treason is punishable by death. He probably would have been killed officially by now. Atiku ought to be in prison as well for corruption. The government of the United States documented bribery collection worth over $40 million transacted through Abubakar's wife. I mean, Atiku Abubakar's wife, her name is Jennifer Douglas Atiku. They used to live in Potomac area of DC. I went there to interview him before. He lives in a mansion there. But when they realized that they were going to face justice in the US, they both ran away from the US. Never faced justice in the US and never faced justice in Nigeria. If Nigeria's justice system was working, Atiku should be, you know, into his 10 to 10 years in jail now for a 20 year imprisonment for the massive corruption, bribery and corruption that he undertook. That's not the only thing that they did. I'm giving you this idea so that you know how terrible our situation is in Nigeria. I'm not describing to you the problems that we have. You already know all the problems. I'm not describing to you the complexity of our problems, you already know it, but I'm telling you a human angle story regarding why Nigeria cannot afford to make the mistake that is about to be made again in 2019 and the reason why I'm standing in front of you. But here is my own story about the same time that all these guys were doing what they were like, committing treason and corruption. In 1989, when I was 18 years old, I walked into the University of Lagos as a freshman. And guess who was also my roommate, and not my roommate, but hallmate and schoolmate, Yinka here, Obasa. 
And as we sat down there, what was Nigeria's problem? Nigeria had a military problem. The military had no intention to leave power. And I also use this to recognize a very important personality in the house, uh, Mr. Benga Musa, who for years, uh, who for years was uh, a partner and a friend. He was a journalist in Nigeria and later worked with the U.S. Embassy for several years in political units. They're always talking to us about democracy and human rights. And we started fighting these characters since 1989. And between 1989 and 1999, while these guys were flourishing in crime, I was flourishing, failing out of school. I didn't actually fail, but they failed me as much as they could. They expelled me from the University of Lagos between 1989 and 1999 when I left Nigeria twice. I was beaten, detained, and tortured by the military, the police, for standing up for what is right. And today, at this juncture, Nigeria has been asked the question between these three persons, which one would you rather choose? And we're in church today, but I'm not comparing myself to Jesus Christ. But we have a Barabbas situation on our hands. <laughs> where there's a young man who did what is right for 10 years, and there are two old men who did what is wrong for their entire life. And our people are being asked to choose. And our people are saying that they want Barabbas on the left, and the other one said they want Barabbas on the right. They don't want a leader in Nigeria that can take Nigeria to glory. They want one of the thieves. But this is not the situation with all of our people, so that I don't depress you. A lot of Nigerians, majority of Nigerians, don't want these guys. Contrary to what you are hearing on the internet about people who are talking about being articulated, you know, or hyperventilated, <laughs> or people who are hallucinated. It's not all Nigerians that are looking for this kind of leadership. They are not looking forward to the continuation of a Buhari presidency or the return of an Atiku presidency. They don't. They actually want a better option. They want someone who can take Nigeria and make it climb out of poverty, make it climb out of hopelessness, make it climb out of recession and depression economically and politically over these years. But the Barabbas of our country have become very, very powerful. And don't be a Pontius pilot. That's my advice to you. Don't say at the end of the day that you are washing your hands off because you don't know what to do. Make a choice because the choice is very clear between the young people who fought for the betterment of Nigeria, who never got rewarded for it, but got punished for it. And the old people who destroyed Nigeria, who never got punished for it, but got rewarded for doing so. Because that's the only reason why Buhari could have been a preference in 2014. But if 2014 didn't teach us any lessons, and 2015 didn't teach us any lessons, these guys have had a chance to show us what they can present to us as their best. At their best, this is the Buhari, this is Nigeria of Buhari's dream. A Nigeria that all of you are afraid to go to. Yes, genuinely. Most of you are afraid to travel back to Nigeria. Those who go do so at their own peril. With consultation with pastor, fasting, and prayer is the only reason you can go to Nigeria today and make it back in one piece with your heart in your mouth. You don't even want to talk about your children. We, if any one of you, have ever had a chance of taking that adventure with your children to Nigeria, you know how your words 
how you become worthless after you come from Nigeria with your children. When they're asking you, Daddy, is that really your country? Yeah. Mommy, are, we, are you serious that we're going back to Nigeria again? But that should not be our situation. But that has been and is going to be again if we don't make conscious efforts. So I'm standing in front of you today, witness to a terrible history of Nigeria. In fact, I'm a witness to the lack of history of Nigeria. Because if Nigeria were to have history, maybe we would not have some of the problems we have now. Because at least people would have been taught the evil done by these leaders to our people. But history has been expunged from our curriculum. Nobody's teaching history again. They don't even teach contemporary history. What we have left is the 140 characters on Twitter. Just barely enough to tell you what happened five minutes ago. Or the ever strolling <coughs> news feed on Facebook that puts you in perpetual state of forgetfulness. Or the one that promotes your attention deficit disorder. Because you have so much to read and look into, you never really pay attention to much. Otherwise, Perhaps my job tonight would have been easier. It would have been easier to convince you. In fact, would it have been necessary for me to speak and describe who I am or what I want to do? You would have, we could have been able to tell that the difference is so clear. You could have made your decisions now. There wouldn't have been a situation where these Nigerian leaders, once in a while, actually come here and we wear our nicest clothes to go and greet them. I've heard when these criminals come into town, some people will even go and buy space to sit around with them. But not all of us. So that's why we are here tonight. I'm here to rub minds with some of you. It's probably not a question you will ask me that I've not been asked before. Maybe I may not have answered it the way you expect. So I expect questions. But I am here hoping that you will take a stand, a stand regarding whether Nigeria should continue to be going down the drain, or we want to stop the bleeding of Nigeria once and for all, so that Nigeria as a nation state that has honestly categorically failed, if you ask me, that we can steer it back into a state that it can be back on track. Because we need to change not only the drivers of Nigeria. If Nigeria were to be a vehicle, if you change the driver alone, it will not work because they've stolen the tires. NAC, take it back. back. Take it back. Action. So, <clears throat> I'm here to plead with you to support this revolutionary agenda to take Nigeria back. You might have heard that from several people, depending on who you talk to, people have different ideas as to how we can save Nigeria. Some people will tell you categorically that the only way Nigeria can be saved is to break up Nigeria into different pieces. Some will tell you that the only way to save Nigeria is to restructure Nigeria into different regions and zones. Some other people will tell you that the only way to save Nigeria is to just abandon Nigeria, let Nigeria take care of itself. And most of you have abandoned Nigeria. But you are not the only ones that have abandoned Nigeria. The people who really don't like Nigeria are the ones who are trapped inside Nigeria. If somebody went to Nigeria today and offered visas to everybody to leave, 70% of Nigerians will leave the same. More than that. I'm just saying, nobody you look back and nobody will be left. No youth. Yes, especially young people. Because it is not their country anymore. According to the title of the book written by Professor Chino Achebe, those is two books. One is that. The one, the latest one, that there was a country. I read that. Yes. The most important one 
that he wrote before that is as well as facts in Nigeria. <coughs> so Nigeria is what Achebe wrote about years ago when Nigeria didn't really exist, things fall apart, and what it is today, there was a country. So in the middle of it all is you. And who are you in the middle of it? You are the people who left Nigeria but that people. Nigeria did not leave. Yes, so many of you no longer have anything to do with Nigeria. But I bet you, if you have WhatsApp, Nigeria is following you everywhere. <laughs> and you are getting those prayers gradually that lead to demand for dough. <laughs> so, what has that led to? Beside oil, the Nigerian diaspora is the biggest source of revenue to Nigeria. So whether you like it or not, whether you hate Nigeria or you don't like Nigeria, you are somehow one of the biggest funder of Nigeria. So the man I've been telling you about foreign aid to Nigeria, we did a calculation recently and the U.S. in three years only managed to give Nigeria $713 million in three years. In Nigerians in diaspora, Nigerians in diaspora, as of the last quarter, had already sent seventy billion dollars to Nigeria. AAC, take Turn it back, take it back, action. action. And they come. That is the official rates. That is true. Western Union, MoneyGram, World Remit, Ping Express, Boss. Now you know. Everybody is helping you send money home, you know. But you know the biggest source of money transfer to Nigeria is help me take it home. That's that's where you really send serious money. When you find somebody who you can trust to help you wrap it and take home for you. So why don't we then think about out of this 70 billion, is it possible that we can look back and support a process with less than that in which if every one of you contributed $200 to our campaign, 10,000 Nigerians would have contributed $2 million. That's all we want. And if we head back home the way we have been doing in the last 12 months, we have figured out how to mobilize the country. We are entering campuses, we are entering palaces, we are shaking up the place and we are shaking the table. And people are falling off the table as we are shaking them. Yes, things are moving around. In fact, ideas that we brought in eight months is forcing people in government to think uh, progressively about how to run the country, even though they are pretending to do so. People are paying attention to us as we are not only discussing the future of Nigeria, but the future of the continent of Africa, or even relations between Africa and blacks as a whole, because if we get it right in Nigeria, the black race can once again be proud. Yes! Hey, hey, see. Thank you, Thank you, ah, All of this are uh, in the document that was prepared known as SPICER EAT. That's the acronym of the document. Which is, we looked at Nigeria and said, what are the 10 most important things we need to do at this time to make Nigeria start to function as a nation state. And we looked at security, we are looking at power, I'm talking about electricity, you know, infrastructure, fighting corruption, creating an economy that is all inclusive, that provides jobs for people, empower the citizens. We are talking about even restructuring of the country. But the restructuring we are talking about is different from the ones the old people are talking about. We differ those. We're talking about healthcare, talking about education, agriculture. And tourism, this is what we call spice heat. And the moment we brought it out, everybody is excited that nobody has been able to fault a single of our program to say that. A round of applause for your ideas. That will not work for Nigeria. And it's out there. We are using them to create a new currency for politics in Nigeria. That instead of all the godfathers walking around with a chip on their shoulder, think that there's nobody, we can start challenging them, and we're challenging them. We're challenging them that, look, one, this country belongs to all of us. 
right? Whether we're in the diaspora at home. I have spent 19 years in the U.S. as well. I am one of the people that came with the intention of spending two weeks, just like the rest of you. And I ended up spending 19 years. I see someone who said he has spent 30. I haven't even put the spirit is telling me that people have spent 30 years in this country. You know? It is what it is. But if I ask you what would be your next natural progression in life, mm -hmm. home, I'm telling you, it's a paradox that why many people want to leave Nigeria, we want to go back. Okay. If you can find a home to go back to. One of my younger brothers told me last week before I came from Nigeria, I said there's something about you guys that you're not telling when people travel abroad. It looks like you don't tell us the truth. I said, no, we don't tell you the truth because we want you to go and find out the truth for yourself. Because you think that because we are abroad, you just form a set of entitlement at home. Send me dollars, send me this. Even those of us who don't have houses here, who don't have cars, we're sending money to people who are using them to buy houses and build them and buy their own cars. You don't know what we are going through here. So the reason we are not telling you what we are going through, we want you to go and experience the same thing. When you get there, you will find out. And by the time you get there, you can't run back. You are trapped there. So, he said, but why is that people are not writing books about their immigrant experience? Said, no, no books. Everybody must go through the experience. You too, go and bundle up in minus five degrees weather. That you have to go to work, and you try to start your car, and your hand is frozen on the keys. But somebody is there who is in 90 degrees weather asking you to send money every week. And when you don't send enough, they start to make you feel guilty. You know, as if you are the one who created the economic crisis in Nigeria. I said, you all of you will find out. But most importantly, you may not need to find out if you fix our country. And if you fix the country, you'll be surprised that so many people will return home you have never seen before in your life. In my village, if you travel abroad in those days and you don't come back, they will go and pose up with a babalawo mm -hmm. to call you back. They'll bring you back. I said, yeah. you don't need to bring anybody back. The moment Nigeria is fixed, people will return on their own. Exactly. That's the state of mind of the most, a lot of us. In fact, a lot of people who want to go home have already acquired skills here. A lot of people want to go home, doctors or accountants or nurses, they want to even go home and serve for free because of the things you see on the ground and you know that these things are not as difficult as they are. <clears throat> but we have not found even the kind of leadership that is receptive and welcoming of ideas. But India did it. That's why Nigerians are flocking to India to get health care. Mm -hmm. They returned all their doctors from the US and the parts of Europe. They returned the guys who are working in Silicon Valley. That's why if you want to build a website today, you go to India, so you're going to build it. In fact, if you contract someone to build you a website in the US, most likely he will get the workers to do it from India. Nigeria could be the same. Nigeria could be like China. Population is no longer a cost. It's a resource. And when you have young people in particular, you even have better advantage than countries that have old people. But you need leaders, elected, empowered to lead your country in this direction. That's all we are asking for, ladies and gentlemen. And that is why we started the movement eight months ago. We started a political party registered about two and a half months ago. And today, beside the two Benjamin political parties, without bragging about it, we are the most popular political party. <laughs> And we have been breathing life into this program of ideas. And ladies and gentlemen, we can promise you that if you support us very well, we'll go home and bring back change, revolutionary change that you will be surprised that you sat down here tonight. Maybe so many of you reluctantly came in here. Wow, that you're part of history. The history that took Nigeria from the doldrums to that level that has never been seen before. You know, I don't used to be a politician, and I still don't consider myself a politician. 
But how I knew I'm a politician now is that if you give me the microphone, I don't know how to drop it. <laughs> so, but I know a lot of you have questions, a lot of you have contributions and uh, suggestions and comments to make. So I don't want to monopolize the space here tonight. But as I was speaking, as we started it, I discovered that it was as if people were hanging around, more people have walked in, and the house is, uh, is full and warm. So I want to thank you all for taking our time to come see us on Sunday. And I just wish you a better Nigeria starting from 2019. Take the right. Not quite there yet. 
Take it back. That's more like it. Faith without works is dead. Uh oh, she's going to preach. Before I say one more word, I want to thank the man of the hour, the man of the season. People, this is a season. This is a movement. He didn't have to say any much more, but I want to thank you for being here this evening. That shows you still care, because some of us have gone on challenge. That means you care, that's why you're here. But I always know as an African woman to pay respect and dues, so I want to recognize my husband, Ambassador Eferi, don't you? Thank you for coming to support. When we talk about politicians, that's them, so. He's going to have the bishop in the house, so he can give us some few words of advice. And I also recognize Senior Pastor, Dr. Simbo Dunaya. Thank you for letting us use here. How many of you are excited? Uh-uh. Right. Seriously, we don't need to convince people too much. Because David had just five stones and took Goliath out. I don't need to convince any of you that we have prayed long enough. And this man is an answer. This man is an answer. Come on. Come on. This man is an answer. That's why we want you to reach deep into your pockets. Adiola, I understand you have some other ways of collecting money tonight. Yeah. Which you can tell us about. On the floor. On the floor. So we'd like you to help. He's already laid the vision out. He's told us what he plans to do. But he's not going to be able to do just himself alone. He needs our support. He needs our backing. Some of us are backing up with presents. But right now we need some cash. Or checks. Or credit cards. All right? Yes. Right, brother? Okay, who's going to be collecting money? I want you to reach deep in your pocket. Write the check. We have a square. So you can do swiping. They were going to do this and then we'll take a few questions like um, Rhoda said. If you want to announce it, we'll be glad to announce your contribution. How's that? Is that a plan? Dr. Adiyako, I know you're here. Just recognizing you. Amen? Amen, yes. They are the leaders in the community. So we'd like, if you'd like to come up and make a presentation of your money, please do so. And we'll just give you a 30 seconds to just kind of say one word and give your money, give your presentation. We don't have to belabor this so we can have some more interaction tonight. Yes, sir? Please come up and say something. Hello? Take it back. AAC. Take it back. Anyway, I didn't tell my president that I was talking to you, so he's looking at me like, what is he going to say? Uh, I am. Uluwashio from Indianapolis. I traveled about three hours to get here. I have, I have never been interested in politics. Never. When I, when I was able to win the visa lottery and come here and you know, give birth here to my children, I said, okay, I'm done. You know, I don't know, you'll probably understand when you put your prayer of Nigeria and you hold it, for real, I did that. And put it in your pocket. That means you're not going back home again. You're not stepping in that place again. I was so frustrated. I finished from last week, chemical engineering. So frustrated. I'm not a dumbo. My friends will see me on live chat or whatever. Every, anybody that's doing live chat, they know me. I'm so famous. In last week, not just in an entity. Bantu is the name. If you are looking for shame, I'll be the last shame that you look for. So, up to now, I'm on your show already. It's not like I have, we have a personal relationship. But just because I saw him on Facebook, 
the way he was doing it, said, this is the man. This man is bringing out the action in me. This man is telling me that Nigeria can, can walk again. Some people are saying, let's make Nigeria great again. Nigeria has never been great ever since I've been in Nigeria. I've never witnessed Nigeria being great. No, I'm sorry. So let's make it work. Okay, everybody has them. Okay, my, my point tonight, I don't want to take your time. My point tonight is that I know how much I spent just making sure that Nigeria works. And I am telling you that Nigeria can only work on that show, right? APC, PDP, they are the same thing. They're just, it's very easy for them to just change. Oh, APC is not working now. Let's just go to PDP. PDP is not working. It's very easy for them to change. If you want to know a country that works, look at, look at Republican and Democrat here. They don't just switch anyhow. So I'm telling you that we need to contribute. Some people will go on Facebook and talk. Nigerians speak a lot of English. I don't speak as much English as we could do. Please, let's speak in the English of money. Please, donate money tonight. Not too much talking. And anybody that donate the IS, don't let me don't let me bluff. People, people are watching me. Eh? How much have I donated before? Is the question. Which we can check. Which we can check the record, but I'm still willing to donate more. And I will double the highest tonight. That's what I'm saying. Thank you. I love your passion, but I'm not taking speeches. I'm taking money. I'm taking money. With my husband's support, we're going to give 500 tonight to us. Almost a politician, but I'm not even a politician. I'm but I love Nigeria. Yes. I love Nigeria. And I know we are going to make a difference. Enough talking. We want the money. So please, unless you're coming up to tell me about money, don't come for the mic. We have time for question and answer. Money? Yeah, of course. Yeah. All right, sir. Uh, All right, sir. For Omole, Omole Le Shou, uh, show, you know we know each other. I'm, I'm not going to pledge here and what I will not do. I'll give you a call and then for tonight, I'm giving you $200. Oh! 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 A member of AS, don't get me wrong. But I I like his vision. We have been together since 19 years. I remember when our path crossed in P001, uh Fagunga Hall in Unilag. That was where we started. Hope 93, we were there together. And I know this man. We have our lines of disagreement. Yeah, that's okay. Sure, sure. And those are part of the things I've reacted to this evening. You can't say Nigeria is not a great country. has never been great. Nigeria did not get to number one economy in Africa by magic. On paper. God has blessed us. It is only mismanagement that brought us to where we are today. All right. You know the story. All right. I'm, going to I'm going to tell you one thing. Why Nigeria don't have an airline today? Thank God I have I have uh, the League of Airport and Aviation Correspondent Chairman here. Well, I was a member. Okay? Umar's daughter panel. We wrote the story that Umar's daughter panel brought out. People, people have destroyed this country. That is what Sahara Reporters has been doing over time. And that's why I can support his dream. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We love the passion. Like I said, this is what we need. We need some fire in the house tonight. And I will hold the mic when you come out to give your money. Or we can announce when you touch your money. All right, sir, go touch your hand to look at. 
Thank you.
Good point. Any amount is helpful. So, okay. A few questions and answers, please. Money. Okay. I'll take a few more dollars before we go to the house. Let's give you another 10 minutes. Thank you. 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 Thank you, thank you, thank you. As the spirit of Columbus, the heart of it all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. 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 back in Nigeria, but it doesn't matter right now. Um, this is, uh, I'm speaking as someone from the north central part of Nigeria, specifically from Plateau State. And all of us are aware of what is going on, especially in just Plateau State, with the issue of uh, the local indigenous of Plateau and the Fulani hate hurts me. So my question to you is, my question to you uh, is this. What are some of the specific policies you're going to put in place in terms of dealing with this issue of how suffer and hurtman versus the people of Plateau State? Thank you. Thank you. Number two. Number two. You want to take me one at a time? No, no, let me take all of it. Okay. Um, and you are number three. Number two, number two here. Yeah. This is number two. 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 Recently, I've been paying a lot of attention to Germany. To a lot of my colleagues back home. And I must tell you, a lot of them are just their jobs. That's, that's by the way. What I want to ask is this um, Nigeria owes so much right now. According to IMF projection, we're owing about $73 billion. As of 2015, which is about three and a half, four years ago, Around May, May 2015, so first half yes, Nigeria is owing 33 million dollars, according to Internet, uh, International Monetary Fund. We're owing 73 billion dollars right now. Now, this generation of Wari and their cacos, their class, 1960 class, that ruling class, are still ruling Nigeria. Their time will go; they will pass. But my generation will be suffering the consequences. Which means we have to pay the debt. We have to show down all the body. Which means um, a lot of things have to get more expensive in order for Nigerians to survive. And we're already seeing that right now. 
Inflation is the highest order of failure. You will see, we send money to Nigeria and it's not. When I came into this country, um, the Nairobi dollar was, ex was exchanged for about $100. We're talking about 350 naira uh, right now, sorry. So my question is, how do we um, address these anomalies, manipulation of our currency, and also paying off, uh, taking care of uh, the debt ceiling that we, that we keep raising? Thank you so much. Number three, let's go. Yeah, Thank and, uh, Please keep your questions to 30 seconds. Sure. Okay. Sure. Uh, first of all, I want to commend your efforts because uh, this is a new beginning for Nigeria. Uh, people complain about Nigeria a lot, and I kept on saying that uh, I'm only part of the group that we keep complaining because we are all part of it. We are all part of it because we didn't take action. I remember your, uh, in July. Just this last summer, chairman of your party, Malcolm Fabi, met me in Toronto. I was at a forum in Toronto, and he sold me the idea of you. And I said, I said it straight. We told Williams, you happen to know some of my friends. I've met you several times as a journalist in Nigeria, but we have not met one on one. Tom Williams in New York. My one day, being a mission, we saw an activist in Lagos. And I said, Show where I cannot be Nigerian Thursday. My comments was like, What do you mean? You know, I said, What is the political structure on ground that your party, the ACA, I said, It's a good thing that somebody as a youth came out to take Nigeria back, which is your slogan. I said, but what is, and I want you to answer this today, what is the political structure in ground? Because we all know that Nigeria, has been, Nigeria politics has been monetized. It is cash and carry. I mean, we can't be blind to it. This is not Arab Spring. Arab Spring, everybody was, I mean, the system was working. And people are comfortable to some extent, but they fought against some policies. But my question is, what is, the political structure that you guys want to that was one of the things that let's go thank you so much we're going to give Mr. Shore the microphone so you can answer our question I'm thinking with it uh, okay, okay let's take one more question yeah um, I'm going to pass this back we'll do another round yeah then we'll do another round go ahead sir um, Mr. Shore I'd like to welcome you to Columbus and to thank you for the opportunity of being here. So really a blessing. Uh, in my book, you have an A+. Plus. That's right. Yeah. 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 Thank you, man. Ah. I first heard about you two days ago, Frank, uh, at the ACF. And what I told my colleagues is that I personally would never put my support behind any big name candidate in Nigeria. We do have a problem in Nigeria. Everybody knows about all kinds of problems. One of them is leadership problem. But guess what is bigger than the leadership problem we have in Nigeria? Followership. Followership is the number, is the biggest problem. It's not the leadership, it's not our leaders, it's we. That means me. That means you, each one of you. Um, Mr. Shore alluded to it earlier on. He said, uh, remember during the crucifixion of Jesus, they brought in a convicted fellow, a robber. And the people, uh, and by, uh, the Portuguese uh, people wanted them to choose between uh, that man and Jesus. Who do I release to you? They said, release Barabbas to us, not Jesus. Crucify Jesus. I put it to you today. If you bring a straight, honest human being, he is uncorrupted. He, he does everything well. He is accomplished. He does everything well. Bring him on the one hand, and you bring somebody who is corrupt, who dishes out um, money, 
who everybody knows is a corrupt individual. Guess what people are going to vote for? The corrupt person. That is the state of affairs in Nigeria. Let us face it. My apologies, sir. Yes, sir. sorry. So, so the question is, I do have faith. I've never met him for, or, or, or I don't know him enough. But I, my spirit, I have confidence in his abilities and confidence that he's going to do what he has said he was going to do. But my question is, in order to move past to the position, to be in the position where you can do these things, how are you going to, how, what do you, what's your plan to move over the hump, over the obstacle of overcoming this recognition, the, the big name people that we do have in Nigeria. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, so much. So we're going to hand over the microphone to Omar Yale Shore himself to answer our questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, the question about the North Central, uh, very solid question. And I will answer it this way. The Hausa Pulani uh, plateau problem is like every other problem in Nigeria that started as a crime. You know, over control of resources, land, and tough. But something happens in between. The person who is the aggressor finds out that the president of Nigeria is his brother the next day. And he draws inspiration, he draws support either direct or indirect, direct from them. And then suddenly he becomes an untouchable, and then the problem becomes unsolvable. That is what has happened in that particular area. I went to a refugee camp. I won't call it internally displaced camp, it's a refugee camp. On my way to Benue, about two months ago. And the people in the refugee camp were saying that the villages from which they were displaced, have been renamed after the people who displaced them. And the federal government of Nigeria, led by Alaji Buhari, is not doing anything about it. Instead, they are planning to set up another committee. And you know what committees do in Nigeria. If you want to cover up a situation, set up a committee for it. Then you set up another committee to look into the work of the other committee. And then you set up another committee to write a paper about it. And another committee to commission the paper. You know, that's how to solve the problem. That's how they solve the problem in Nigeria. As the president of Nigeria next year, first I will be impartial. And security agencies will be allowed to do their work. That is to say, the movement of arms and ammunition that is accorded and accorded certain special categories of people will no longer happen in Nigeria. And everybody, anybody found to have committed any crime will be tried. Why would you look at it and say none of the aggressors or people who are seen even in videos have ever been arrested? Or in cases where they are arrested, they are released almost the next day or prosecuted. It is because there is some kind of bias for them. It is not to say that even on the other side, there has not been crime, okay? So that we are very clear about it. But the way to solve it is to go in there and make sure that everybody who has committed a crime or who is engaging in crime is flushed out of the area. And not to give the excuse that the people who are killing in the plateau are from the Niger Republic. I mean, how do people walk with AK-47 from the Niger Republic to plateau and nobody stops them on the way? Right? What happened to our customs? What happened to our special task forces? I'm just giving you this breakdown because we know the solution to the problem, quite honestly. But we don't have the people who can solve the problem. If you want the blood to keep flowing in the plateau, haven't seen anything yet until Buhari comes back next year. That's true. You know, that is how truthful it is. Because they are the ones who will select the generals who are sent in to go and intervene. They know who to choose who will not stop the problem. There have been instances. 
including driving president, by even the governor of the state, that they have found people who are directly in the security services who are arming these aggressors against the people on the platform and displacing them. And the government hasn't done anything about it. The only time they do anything about it is when the elections are coming in that area and they'll call their dogs to, on, into a ceasefire. But the moment you have a Nigerian leader who is pan Nigeria, who is not nepotistic, tribalistic, or blind to crime, you will find out that there will be peace. That the same thing applies to Boko Haram. Do you know why I'm saying this? It happened in Niger Delta region before. The Niger Delta militants you have heard about, so many of them, we knew them because that's where I come from. They were getting their weapons from the Nigerian army. I did the story about it on Sahara Reporters. And nobody disputed the story to today. So any crime you see, any terroristic activity that happens for a long time in Nigeria has official imprimatur involved in it. You have people at the top supporting these criminal activities. And the moment you shove them out of the way, you'll be surprised how quickly 50% of the problem will be solved. And the rest of the 50% will, of course, have something to do with leadership and being firm and assertive in curbing the excesses and bringing to trial and to justice people who are involved in this genocide that we're talking about. Last thing I will say is that whenever there's genocide in Nigeria, we must call it its right name and not try to hide or try to pay power over it. You know, and that is what also hasn't happened in the play too. When they commit genocide, you say, oh, you know, it's fight between two communities. It's not. It's organized genocide. And the moment we don't give it that name, we'll be able to solve the problem. I'm speaking to you as someone who has actually traveled uh, in a place recently. We traveled past the place on the road from Nasarawa to Benue recently. It was it, you know, the Makoti. And this, we still found splatters of blood on the ground. They just killed 20 people there. Frequently, these people you mentioned will come out of the, of the bush onto the highway and just shoot people. They are still doing it. But you wonder, what is the place for little technology like drones to monitor their movements? Why can Nigeria security agencies use simple technology that police will take for granted here? Things that you can even buy on Amazon sometimes. They will never do it because Nigeria don't have leaders who don't understand the place for this kind of tools and technology in fighting crime. So, you know what I say to people all the time when I answer these questions, I don't take too long. I don't want to expose all my strategies, otherwise they will steal it. Yes, they have no shame. Uh, the question about indebtedness of Nigeria. You see, honestly, debt is not a bad thing if your country is producing. America is the biggest debtor in the world. But they had a debt, the, the debt counter in New York. It moves faster than your watch, you know. They are owing every damn minute. In fact, all of you that are sitting down here, you are debtors in America. They are own college loans, your credit card that you are carrying. You know, it's for a reason. But in Nigeria's own situation, we are not borrowing to finance production. We are borrowing to finance greed. And that is our biggest problem. The moment we borrow, the money is transferred from the state to private individuals who use it to do whatever they want. You cannot believe that 150 Nigerians are owing 5.3 trillion naira. These are monies they borrowed from banks, and the Nigerian government took them over as toxic uh, loans through Amcon. Amcon is the Asset Management Corporation of Nigeria. 150 Nigerians are doing, but you know what? They bought jets with it, they built mansion with it. Nigeria never collected the mansions from them. They will go and value a small house somewhere. In fact, one of the people owing Nigeria went and used a bridge in his village 
to use it as a collateral in Nigeria, a bridge owned by Nigerian government. Ladies and gentlemen, Nigeria is a crime scene. I'm serious. And until you bring a forensic president in the place. No. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank you man. Ah. He's not afraid to step on toes. We will not be able to pay back our debts, but the moment you put the country of Nigeria into a productive state, we will pay back our debts and we will be able to have debts that help us to even make our countries function better. That's why I said, you know, debt is not a bad thing depending on what you do with it. Uh, so, we'll pay back, no question. But you know, for me, it's also philosophical. The question is that the people who we are owing are also owing us. All this, yes, is to look at the balance of what you are taking from us and what we took from you. And we can, this might sound a little bit funny to you, but so many of these debts you are seeing, they were also given in bad faith. You cannot imagine somebody going out there giving loans to people like Babangida. You know he's going to steal it. You are supposed to be responsible also. When you want to borrow money here, they look at your credit history. They look at your ability to pay back. You cannot just give a credit card to a convicted thief and expect that he will be paying you back every month. No. They will ask you all these questions. Say, so these people that have been giving out debts, we have to also look at, that mean, like, giving out uh, loans to us, we have to look at their motive. Particularly China, for example. You know, every time they talk about Nigeria is looking for euro bonds and is oversubscribed, I laugh at them. People don't understand the reason why Nigeria's euro bond is oversubscribed. It's because of interest rates. When America wants to borrow money from China, the interest rate is as low as 2%, sometimes it's 1%. When Nigeria wants to borrow money from China, the interest rate is 27%. How are you going to pay back the loan? That's why China may own a lot of African countries pretty soon. They have already started by taking over you know, airports. Before you know it, they will own your cooking pots. No, it's true. And so many of these idiotic leaders don't even look at the fine prints that they sign on to. They don't read, they don't read the agreement of the loans. What do you expect also? Somebody who, are not, who doesn't have a white uh, certificate, how can they reach Chinese loan agreement? So it's very complicated though, but it's also the reason why we should be alarmed enough not to return any of these guys into a position of uh, authority in our country. Number four question, uh, you asked about political structure. We started a movement eight months ago. Started as a registered political party about two and a half months ago. As of today, no, let me put it this way. Of all the political parties in Nigeria, only the PDP, through articles, uh, Buru the Change Convention in Port Harcourt, and the one of the APC in Abuja, had any open convention that had as many people attend as our own. We had our convention in Lagos, it was attended by about 3,000 people in Lagos. Yeah. 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 Thank you, man. Ah, uh, we did not cook rice. We didn't bring biscuits for anybody. No Ankara was here. And people stayed until the end of the convention, uh, of, until the point where we, the, we had to leave the hall because the hall was also rented. Uh, after we left, I mean, at a point, there was a cut-off point. So, we have structures in 36 states, we have structures in most of the local governments, we have candidates, there were seven senatorial candidates in two months as a political party. We have 10 governorship candidates across Nigeria. I think we have about 25 or 27 House of Rep candidates. We have over 117, I think it's over 124 House of assembly candidates across Nigeria in two and a half months. Structures are all over the place. We have structures at home and we have structures in the diaspora. 
We have structures on earth and in heaven. Do you know why I said it? I went to Australia. I don't think heaven is further than Australia. <laughs> Take it back. There's no political party in Nigeria that I can tell you they have membership in all these places. But to address the issue of structure that you address partially, which is the monetization and the commoditization of politics, we don't have those kind of structures, but we cannot call those ones structures. Any retail outlet for intimidation and buying of votes, they are not legitimate political structures. And we should not be glorifying them by calling them structures. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you very much. The PDP don't have structures. The APC don't have structures. They just have bodegas where they sell and buy votes. We can't call those things structures. We have legitimate organic structures all over Nigeria today. But you know what? We need support to keep them running. The truth is that if we want to play the money game, we will not even be in the race today. But if any one of you read Vanguard newspaper today, they said a poll was conducted, even though they read some of these polls. But somehow we came out as number third behind Buhari and Atiku. But we know that we will beat them. We are number one. It's just a matter of time. And somebody said that uh, the Nigerian situation is not like the Arab Spring. But I can assure you that it might become the Hamatan. Because the Hamatan season is coming. Something like that could happen. Final question is, uh, Doc here asked me, how do you move over these obstacles that have been described as structure, money, and toggery, you know, and assassinations when they get desperate? It is going to be done by political will. And the political will you are saying is your will today, and the will of people who are dipping hands into their pockets, out of faith, contributing perhaps money you don't have, to say to us, go do the best you can to take this country out of the woods. We will summon the obstacle, not because the obstacle is big, but because we have done it before, sir. I was a young person when Nigeria's problem was military rule in the university. Nobody believed that the military could be disgraced out of power, but we did it. By 1999, Nigeria returned to democracy because of efforts of young people like myself and some you know, older persons like Wale Shoyinka, Gane Fawe, Femi Falano, Chima Obani, across the country who kept fighting consistently. There is no body who can assure you that an obstacle will be upstaged overnight. No. But the beginning of ending and any political obstacle is to confront it. Amen. That's it. Amen. And we are determined to confront it until we reduce it to rubbish. Round of applause for Moya and We are going to take three more questions. So, you want to take money? Yes. All right, go ahead and take the money. Amen. <laughs> Husband is probably shaking his head. What happened to this woman? <laughs> <laughs> really, he's the politician, but he's going like, what? What's going on with her? Seriously, a pastor said this to me one day. Anytime I enter somewhere and you're there, I get scared because I know something is up. Something is up. We are not here because we have nothing else to do. We are here because we believe there is hope that something will change in Nigeria. And I want to put this out to you. Why him? Because we've heard some of these stories. People come and promise things. Who isn't familiar with Sahara reporters? Anybody? You better not raise your hand. Exactly. The courage it took when everybody told him it couldn't be done, you couldn't go against the establishment, you couldn't write things against them. It's the same power that is behind him right now. So, so in the right place. 
put your money to this. So next time you're talking about Nigeria, you can say, I was part of this movement. So I'm back to take money and cash. The checks can be written to take it back. So take it back. I need some announcements for money. Anybody ready to give? Yes, please. Your name and the amount. Give them a round of applause. Those sitting on the high table will be coming after you soon. Uh, I greet everyone. Uh, our president, me, Nigeria. Uh, my name is Sheikh Mkumba. Uh, being one the national youth president of Nigeria. The former. The name is Chief Otumba Ahmed Usman. Hello, Hello. Hello. Um, I, I just knew here in Columbus, and uh, based on the donation, well, there's no way we have to contribute for good things. Yes. That's why I will donate fifty dollars. Wow. Yeah. Um, something to say. Being a youth, I have something to contribute to my people, especially those in Nigeria. The power in the hand of the youth. And we know the importance of the youth. For us to see a youth come out and to, to become the president of Nigeria, the kudos. We have to give kudos to someone. I'm not a politician, I'm an activist, but I find myself as a politician, be the youth president of the land. And it's not a small thing to be the youth president. Mm -hmm. And it's not a small thing to become the president of the Republic of Nigeria. Yeah. We, I hold all my people, especially those are in Nigeria, they should come out and vote for youth. Let's leave the old people alone. We have been in this day for a long time ago. When, when, when? I move all my children out of Nigeria because of what I'm facing personally. So please, uh, just to contribute, please for support. You know, people will be coming out speaking English, grammar, they're not taking us to anywhere. What we need, let's call the space. Yeah, let's our people. We are going to be contributing fifty dollars in this moment. Do we have anybody right now, Mr. Samuel Shalia? Come on, come on, stay. Are you contributing? It's going time for questions. No, we're not asking questions. We need people to contribute right now. That's it. I'm going to give you the mic. A hundred dollars for you. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank Ready? My contribution is to me. Okay. I'll say a couple of things. My passport. If members of CICC are here, get your passport ready. Or you push your wallet because we are going to Australia. <laughs> As we are heaven is <laughs> our presidential candidate here. Let me tell, let me tell you this. I, I have my reservations. I have my reservations. And I think I told some of the organizers my reservations. But you have made efforts to answer some of my questions tonight. And, and the, the dilemma I have is this. You cannot be complaining about Nigeria. And then you see a good effort being made. No matter the reservation that you have, you have no more to talk again yes. if you don't support them. Absolutely. That's why you remember saying, if you are hearing big, 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 and you don't carry it with them, they will dump it at the back of the house. So having said that, I will contribute. But I'm a pastor. I cannot tell you how much. <laughs> Apologies, sir. So, you know, said, no, it's it's so sorry. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. So we're gonna take 
Um, do, do we have anybody that wants to donate right there? Okay, yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah. Donations, donations. Okay. Uh, questions or donations? We're going to take donations first before questions. Okay, let's keep up to the uh, question. And now we're going to take Mr. Femi Oshadia first. Osabia. Question. Yes. Osadia. Osabia. Osabia. Thank you so much, my brother, for putting that, you know, All right. strength. Thank you for my, for my fault in my mouth. I appreciate that. My bad. <laughs> um, Mr. Shore, uh, two things. One, like I said when we were playing the radio uh, interview, I don't know you from Adams, but I've been following this Adams program like doing my business. And I, I listened a lot to what you said on and on and on with Dr. Damages and everybody. You've been there. I don't want to say this, but I don't care whatever that happens. You know what? You've already distorted the revolution in Nigeria within those people. Hey, hey, see! Thank you, man! So I've already pledged my, my support to you, and uh, it's not going to stop. You talked about we can also do some material things to Nigeria and all that. I've already talked to one of my guys back home. He's a very good designer with t-shirt, and we're going to contribute to that too. I don't know what it's going to be, but at least I've been thinking within a thousand of that shirt to the progress. Now, to my question. Um, you are one in a million They have tried to distort those people in power for so long. They have been parading Nigeria since independence. I'm, I'm almost 44 years old. We've been saying up never when I was born, and they're still saying it up to today. <laughs> now, you came in into the whole arena to distort this whole movement. Are you concerned about your security? When you go to bed and lay down your head, are you concerned about your security? That's my first question. And my second question is this. What are you going to do to make sure you secure? Once you become the president, what are you going to do to make sure you put Nigeria on the map? Make sure everybody can go back home safe and good. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. We're going to take one more questions. We're actually going to take three questions and he's going to answer. So we are going to, I'm going to Femi right now is the next man. Thank you, Mr. Iwai. Um, as part of the um, political way, please use your revolution. Call your family and friends back home in Nigeria. Tell them about this movement. Tell them about this revolution. And tell them, orientate them who to vote for. The dollar that you have been sending back home, let it work for you this time. Hey, right. Thank you, President today, my question is this. For any nation to grow, the electricity is very, very important. How will you be able to tackle the issue of electricity affecting Nigeria as a government? Thank you so much. And uh, after this, I'm gonna, we need to take more money, you know? One of the reasons why easier is to be able to raise funds, to be able to make these dreams a reality. And we need to make that happen. We need to contribute our quarter, you know, to that dream. So, yes, I'm gonna take one more person, and I'm gonna call on Duni, and from that, we're gonna take more funds, okay? I was there so I don't have you what you did in Unilag then with the courtist I know you have a will you have a drag I don't have any doubts I even called my cousin Bumi. I said say, but I, I believe in you but the issue is I have been following you I, I, you, you traveled everywhere 
Nobody, no president has ever done that in Nigeria. That's right. You could see this. You could see this shot in his face. You could see it everywhere. The day you interviewed those, I was, I, I followed you everywhere. But my, my, my advice is that we need to go door to door. Thank you. This is a wave. It's not a question. Please, we need to knock door to door like they were doing in Georgia. In Nigeria, we tell our people. Yeah. Because when they interview people, they say they don't know you. That's, the, that's what I'm saying. What's the question? What's the question? You have a question. All right. Thank you so much. What we can do is we need to make our questions as snappy as possible because we have a whole lot of people that want that have so many things to say you know so but right now before we take the questions now we're going to go back to the morning on the morning people yes sir thank you very much hello hi can we keep it down you know we africans we can talk I started out with faith without action. Please, anything you give tonight, you can go home and sleep well, that you did the right thing. So if you haven't given tonight, I'm not gonna curse you, I'm not gonna pray for you. Give something tonight before you leave. Adiola, you wanna move around and collect the money? I'm talking. Any amount is enough. Give something. You will feel better living here tonight having given something. You will feel better having given something. I want to make another plea to you. You have family members in Nigeria. Hello. Hi. We're collecting money, no more noise. They're right. Close the door. Close the door. We are giving this to a good cause, so please give something before you leave tonight. Please, please, please give us Again, we don't want pledges. Write your check. Swipe it and give something before you leave. I was making a plea. Contact people in other states in the U.S. Contact people at home. We're talking about structure and grassroots. That's part of it. We need their votes. We need their votes. So if you get excited, then we'll get excited as well. If anybody wants to announce their donation, I'm more than willing to do that for them. Uh, if we get compl com complaining about acting who I'm not going to mention names. If you are complaining about some political parties buying votes, they are doing so because they have funds. We, he is not trying to buy votes, but for us to be able to organize an election in Nigeria, for us to be able to mobilize our people in Nigeria, we need funds. Okay, AAC needs to be able to put in place a structure just like every one of us agree, we need a structure. We need, we have 773 local governments in Nigeria. Uh, we have 36 states. So for AAC to make a meaningful impact in this election, we need 773 AAC local government, uh, AAC chairman, right? Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. We need 36 AAC Governors. state chairman in our states. We need senatorial, can, uh, not just candidates. AAC. When you look at PDP, AAC, I mean PDP and ABC, 
They have a structure. That structure is sort of like people the right people in charge to be able to champion, champion their course. You know, AAC needs to do the same. We need grassroots, like we need to be involved in a grassroots. And you cannot do this by just talking over here in the USA. We need to do this. So basically, fonts is so, so important in all those things. So that's one of the reasons why he's um, uh, agitating for this fonts. So whatever you have, of course, donate. And we're gonna move on to our next questions. I understand that you are thinking that, oh, how does he plan to do all those things? Question. Okay, then we're gonna take, we're gonna take more questions. You broke my flow right there. Let's see. Yeah. We're gonna punish you. Yeah. So again, a bowl is in front of you. We're walking around. Give something. If you think about it, it takes money to travel. It takes money to get to all of us to give us this opportunity to hear him. And I know people are still coming. We're going tonight. People are still texting, they're coming. So please, as he begins to answer, we're going around and taking your money as well. Please do a supportive thing tonight. Thank you. Uh, let me say a few things before I answer your questions. And uh, they have to, these things have to do with the fact that this is not our first time answering to a call. It just turns out that this is probably the closest court you know, uh, to home. When Obama was running in this country, the people who are non-U.S. indigents or well, who say citizens, but people who came, you know, the diaspora community that contributed the most were Nigerians. In fact, not only did we contribute to Nigeria, in Nigeria, they raised two billion naira for Obama that didn't get to Obama. <laughs> yes, they had Ankara that they called Obama Ankara. Yes, with Obama's speech. We took it, we put it on our head as we say it at home. So, this is our first, and this is about Nigeria, but not about America. Second, is to let you know that you can also make donations on GoFundMe, it's gofundme.com slash over 2019. We've raised almost $97,000 on GoFundMe so far. And this is something that Nigerians have been doing consistently. Some people have made over $2,000 donations since we started. They keep coming back and donating more. My friend also who left Nika Obasa didn't want me to announce this, so I can't keep it to myself. He's going to donate a thousand dollars by January. He was left to go back to uh, his city. What's the next city over from here? Yeah. Yeah. Not in the other, I mean, it's, it's also in Cleveland. 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 Cleveland, yes, he came from Cleveland. So, uh, because you know, I don't live in the US anymore, I don't know US cities <laughs> anymore. <laughs> so, he went back to Cleveland. And we also have a local account in Nigeria, Zenit Bank account, 100602-3871. 100602-3871. In case you have a local account in Nigeria, you have dollars, I mean, sorry, Naira, hanging out there that you can use to contribute. What we are doing is something that has never been done before. And one of it is Nigeria is used to taking from politicians. We are making Nigerians give for a political cause. And it's exciting a lot of people. In fact, the bulk of the Naira donations we are getting are from people who have a thousand Naira, 500 Naira here and there. And they are excited to give the money the moment they heard our message. And when you look at people who are making these donations, you will know that when you hear about ethnic division, it was created by our leaders to perpetuate their wickedness. Yes. When you hear about religious division, they do it on purpose to perpetuate the evil against our people. Our people don't care about ethnicity, they don't care about religion, they just want a better life. Yes. That's all they want. 
they want a fantastic life. They want to be able to live in Sokoto, live in uh, Cross River, I mean, Calabar. They want to live in Lagos. Whatever it suits them is where they want to live. But Nigerian leaders have deliberately put a wedge between his people because that is what makes this happen for them. I'll go back to the questions about concern for security. This is a question I like this is one of my FAQs, frequently asked questions. But my answer is simple. Who in Nigeria is safe? No one. Nobody. So you are concerned about my security. What about the security of your father you left behind? Of your brother that you left behind? Of your sister who is there? What is safe in Nigeria? You don't have to contest for office to be unsafe in Nigeria. It might be something as simple as just traveling on the road. A trailer will come and clear your vehicle and any vehicle around it. It might be just kidnappers. What well, they are kidnapping has become such a terrible business in Nigeria. People are kidnapping for recharge cards. They will kidnap you and say, if you send us recharge cards, we'll release your mother. That's how bad it is. You know, it's, I'm not exaggerating. You need to be in Nigeria. But the sad thing about Nigeria, Nigeria is that Nigerians have become numb. I have to tell you this. A lot of Nigerians have become numb to bad news. If someone dies in Nigeria, they will just walk over the person. Yes, and move on with their lives. And it's part of the problem that is you know, emboldening the bad leadership in the country. They know that no matter how bad you are, you will find somebody who will praise you for it. Nigerians know that Atiku is a thief. Of course. They know. They know that the money he's going to use for this election is the money he stole from them. They know that Buhari is lifeless. Mm -hmm. They didn't need Donald Trump to tell them that Buhari is lifeless. But they have become numb to whoever. They just say, look, whichever one wins, Nigeria will still be Nigeria. Jerry. And the culture of instant gratification has destroyed our people. Yes. They want to collect their reward on earth. Nobody is planning to go to heaven in Nigeria mm. to get reward. Not even our pastors. I'm not talking about the ones here. Because if you look at it, the prayer points of people who are in Nigeria, they are different from the prayer points of the people who are in the US. Because while you are in Nigeria, you are praying for Nepal to bring light. When you come to America, you are praying to pay your bills, like your life bills. You know the prayer points are different. So you are wondering if you are serving the same God. Those are the kind of situations that the, the dignity of the Nigerian person has been decimated. And they know that the more they pound your dignity, the less you have self-esteem. And if you don't have self-esteem, you cannot make correct political choices. Because you're always presented between who is the worst of the two candidates. And that's why you hear in Nigeria people say, well, the angel I know, um, the devil I know, is better than the angel you don't know. Meanwhile, they're surrounded by angels, but they prefer the devil. It's the thing you are hearing when they say, oh, we don't know Shore. No, they are not saying that they don't know Shore. If you dip deeper, I mean, if you dip deeper, in, I'm sorry, deeper into it, if you dip, dip deeper into it, they know, but they are saying that Shore doesn't have money to give. That's what they are telling you. No, we don't know this is your candidate, too. Call the person back and say, where is the candidate I introduced to you last week? He said, that, that uh, AAC person. We don't know him. But I introduced him to you last week. You still don't know him. Yeah. Uh, but the other people just came and passed here now. <laughs> Atiku people. We know Atiku. You ask them, how do you know Atiku? <laughs> it has to do with transaction. <laughs> that you don't, because Atiku has gone to see him. I mean, I see, see the Nigerian people. That's the message you are hearing from them. Otherwise, even in the interviews that somebody was uh, had been referring to, 
those interviews, they said it. Yeah, we know the boy now. You know, they know some Harry Potter's. You know, they know the guy who was with Abiola in 1992. They, they, they know the name, but they are saying that I have not come the way by way of recognition. And recognition in Nigeria is highly monetized. So I'm just saying that to you so that when you are calling people at home, you understand what they mean when they say they don't know somebody. Yes. It's that the person has not come to see them. That's the sad news. Um, electricity. How do we intend to tackle electricity? Nigeria has miserable 3,000 megawatts of electricity supply for 200 million people. See, let me break it down to you. That is enough. That is not enough to service some university campus here in Ohio or some companies or transportation hubs. 3,000 megawatts is not enough. If you want to find out. I don't want to complicate it, but just Google how many megawatts of electricity is consumed in the U.S. a day. Just Google it. You will know that we are jokers in Nigeria. But we need and we can have progressively within two years over 24,000 megawatts of electricity. And that can guarantee 24 hour electricity for most of Nigeria. And that's where we need as a starting point. How do we get? We need an energy mix. Solar is an energy source that we can easily use. Northern Nigeria has sunshine from morning to night to the next morning. Just create solar farms. You'll be selling electricity to your neighboring countries. We have 9 billion cubic uh, uh, cubic uh, 9 billion cubic uh, uh, storage of gas in a good land alone. 9 billion. That can power the whole of West Africa or the whole of Africa if we tap it. But we need to clean up a good land. They even still have coal in Enugu. Right? We have hydroelectric sources. But the problem with it is that you give these people a chance to go and do it, they will not grow the electrical grid in Nigeria. The person who is selling generator can never give you electricity. It's as simple as that. It's not possible. You are asking a person who is running a private university to give, could give you public education. You are wasting your time. You are asking a person who is bottling water to give you public water. You are wasting your time. His own understanding of providing water is to sell it. Atiku is the biggest source supplier of uh, bottled water, they call it Faro water in, in, in uh, Adamawa State. It's university, ABTU or you know, APTI. Nobody who is any less than five million naira can, can send their children to the school. So you have to be a civil servant who is stealing actively. Before you can send your kids to this school, and you're expecting him to come and fix public university for you, you're wasting your time. If 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 Atiku becomes the president of Nigeria, you put Nigeria on eBay. That's the truth. So, but the electricity problem can be solved. You see, there's, what is annoying to me is that there's plenty of modern technology these days that can resolve a lot of Nigerian problems. But again, as I usually say, you cannot have analog brain leaders trying to fix a digital society. It's not possible. Their brain work backwards. Our own is working frontward. Take it back. Take it back. Ah. Duni, thank you so much. It's great to see you after that many years for the University of Lagos. I agree with you that we need door-to-door -door campaign. Yes. But we also need you to do what we call door-to-door -door phone calls. Yes. 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 Send messages.
Let me give you a strategy that my, that you don't know. You are WhatsApp, right? Every day someone forwards a prayer to you in Nigeria. Yes. Nigerians are the biggest prayers in the world. All, you also send back your own message to them every morning. Each time you get the message, send back your own message back to them. These are candidates and vote for him so that you'll be sending me less prayers. <laughs> yes. Because so many of the prayers that you get, God has already answered them by putting resources in Nigeria. But our people refuse to get off their knees after their prayers have been answered. So, please, do your own part. The truth is that the people at home respect our brothers and sisters in the diaspora. When you call them, they respect you, they believe in what you're saying to them. And you tell them, look, we can solve this problem by voting for the right guy. So, it's a family meeting that you need to have over the telephone with your family members, over WhatsApp, over Facebook. Another strategy of Facebook. That those of you who don't know should not ignore. If you're on Facebook, bad people don't never leave your timeline. They'll write 20 comments. But good people never say anything. They'll be liking yeah. and liking and reacting. In fact, instead of a good person to write something that is good, they'll call you and say, ah, Caesar, don't it? Ah, sorry, I saw something they wrote on your timeline. Don't react to them because I would have reacted, but I don't want anybody to insult me. But the bad people, they have no shame. They'll be there, they write 520 comments. Before you know it, the dominant commentary comes from the bad people because the good people don't want to be insulted. So get back to the mode of expressing yourself positively. If somebody says Atiku and he gets 20 responses, I say, never your life. Should you come and put that on my timeline? He <laughs> won't do it tomorrow again. This one always says Buhari, and we all push back. It becomes a dominant position that people no longer take these things as a joke anymore. And before you know it, they will start packing up. Don't, for, don't think that social media is not going to work. Social media is part of the solution to the problem. It has come to stay. In fact, this election is a social media election. So, anywhere you can make your opinion known, anywhere you can get your position stated, please don't forget to do so. Thank you. I know um, His Excellency is getting tired. I don't get tired. I don't know if you guys are tired. But I know something. I know something that will help revive. Wait, cool down. Cool down. I hear some sound of foreign currencies in the house. See, I told you you'll be smiling after that. Um, we're in the US, we can take dollars. But if you're in Europe, you can so that is to open up the floor to any kind of foreign currency right now. So it doesn't have to be balanced. You don't have to be balanced. You don't have to be So any foreign currency donations available? I wasn't, I was so excited when the youth came up, you know, Sibelano, uh, Doye, Kingsley, more than the youth. But I got disenchanted at the point when one of you sort of went your way. But I was thinking that with that kind of coalition, you should be able to fight the hegemony of this cabal on the top. But then, I've now listened to so many interviews with you, and the reasons why you separated yourself. But this will have been a Having said that, my wife is in America. I live in Nigeria. <laughs> I don't have currency in the US. Yeah, no, yes. But I'll give you $150,000. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I
I heard a few people say they weren't really sure this was a fundraiser, so they may not have money. I'm a very credible person. On that note, Adiola, I know we don't do pledges typically, but for tonight, sir, I am willing to take pledges because I'll come for it. I'll, I'll collect it. So if you have a pledge, talk to us and we'll take care of that. Also, the GoFundMe is available. So that's another way to give. I thank all of you who have given tonight, seriously. And it doesn't stop. We'll keep giving because we're moving towards the presidency, right? Yes, sir. All right. Any more money coming before yes, sir. we take a little break with questions? Yes, sir? Money? Okay, okay. okay. just to let you know, I went on it. Does anybody remember what I said when I went on it? Yes. yes. I double, double, double. Hey, run applause for me too, man. Wait, wait, wait. What was the highest donation? Was like five hundred. So pledges are welcome. What else? All right. Thank you so much. We do not have time to waste and we're going to take more questions and uh, thank you so much for the kind ad and it shows how much you love that country Nigeria. Thank you so much. Alright, I'm going to take more questions and uh, I'm going to call on Michael Ackman. Round of applause. Round of applause for him. He's actually one of the brains behind this. Um, uh -oh. One Nigeria, thank you. <laughs> um, when my wife started, For you to open your hand means that it's only people like uh, Buhari with it that has an uh, institution behind him and a Tiku with stolen public wealth that can say that kind of a thing. I mean, with a young man with you, and these guys were like 50s or 30s, 40s when they, when they, when they, when they, when they, when they got there, like Bangla was 40. I saw Bangla, he was 40 when he just came in. He was a very young man, but they had guns. And the people that were able to fought them to a standstill were these Sarah reporters and the Tinu were cool. And they're the ones still, I mean, they're going to be there for a while. And they're probably going to die there because when they're done, they put their kids there. So the, I, I like your courage. Okay. And I'm going to stand Hi. behind you. I, I honestly had a candidate, which was a Tiku. Mm. But yeah, having, so having, yes, yes. You are so Having, yeah, my wife will always tell me that I'm so worried. I know, and I will reply, I'm a But honestly, I have never, I have never, and that is me, broadcast my donation since I was born. I don't do it. Do it today. I always do mine anonymous. But I'll do mine. And, um, you will hear from me, that's my wife. My question is this. Now, 99, when the Lagos state governor, who was Tinubu then, 
when they were coming in, it was one of you guys that was fighting the military. The military has not left power. They're still there. Yeah, that's right. They're still there. They're not going to leave. Yes. They're not going to leave. I'm serious. And the man is not willing to answer right now. What happened in Austria State and the state and uh, yeah.